the Ferdinand tank destroyer was the most successful mass-produced tank destroyer during World War II. In kill per loss, it reached an average claimed ratio of 10 to 1. During the Battle of Kursk, Schwere Panzerjäger Abteilung, so heavy tank destroyer battalion 653, claimed to have knocked out 320 enemy tanks for the loss of only 13 Ferdinands. This impressive average ratio was due to its superior firepower and protection, which gave it an enormous advantage when used in head-on combat or aesthetic defensive role. However, poor mobility and mechanical unreliability greatly diminished its operational capability. The Ferdinand was only built because of the arrogance of Ferdinand Porsche, the personal friend of Adolf Hitler. Porsche was so confident that his design for the Tiger tank would be adopted that he ordered the chassis intro production before receiving a formal production order. When the Tiger contract went instead to Henschel, Porsche was left with 90 odd chassis in various stages of completion. Rather than scrap these expensive vehicles, it was decided to find another purpose for them. The Ferdinands first saw combat in the Battle of Kursk, where 89 were committed. This battle was the largest deployment of the vehicle during its service. The Ferdinand was optimized for destroying Soviet T-34 tanks and 76.2 mm anti-tank guns from behind the front lines with its 88 mm gun at a range of over 3 km, a roll which it performed well. Its most significant problem at Kursk was mine damage and mechanical failure. Any damage to the tracks or suspension negated the protection of the armor as crews were forced to dismount and attempt repairs. The other problem was its weight. The immense weight of the Ferdinand made towing very difficult. The standard armored recovery vehicle in German service at the time was the Berge Panzer IV, a variant of the Panzer IV tank that could tow a single Panzer IV medium tank easily. But it was insufficient for larger vehicles with a Tiger I heavy tank requiring three Berge Panzer IV to be towed and the Ferdinand requiring five linked in tandem to pull the vehicle off the field. In addition, the Ferdinand was hampered by flaws such as the lack of peripheral vision blocks or a machine gun as secondary defense armament. Report says that Soviet infantry quickly recognized these flaws and could easily hide in the trenches until the Ferdinand advanced through their lines, then swarmed the vehicle with grenades and Molotov cocktails from the sides. However, losses to Soviet infantry are disputed in after action reports. On the other hand, General Heinz Guderian himself complained that the Ferdinand, much as other failed designs, suffered from lack of close-range protection against infantry assaults. In the initial stages of the Kursk battle, when the Germans were on the offensive, heavy vehicles could be recovered and repaired with relatively peace at night. This at first allowed the majority of knocked-out Ferdinands to be rescued 
repaired and returned to duty. However, once the tide of the battle had turned against the Germans and they fell back on the defensive with fewer vehicles to spare, functional Ferdinands with minor damage to their tracks or suspensions had little hope of recovery. The crews were usually forced to destroy the vehicles to prevent a mostly intact Ferdinand from falling into the hands of the enemy. To solve this issue, three of the recovered vehicles were converted to armored recovery vehicles after the battle. They were called Bergepanzer Tiger P or simply Berge Ferdinand. Instead of a massive superstructure with a cannon, these vehicles received a low superstructure in which a machine gun was mounted. There was a circular entrance hatch on the roof and in the rear part of the superstructure there were two part entrance doors. One Berge Ferdinand was sent to the front in Italy in the spring of 1944 and the remaining two of the rescue tanks were lost on the Eastern Front in 1944. After the Kursk battle, 48 Ferdinands were fitted with a hull-mounted machine gun and the commander's cupola. But even with these modifications, the Ferdinands were still vulnerable to infantry attacks and unsuited to offensive operations. Renamed the Elephant, the vehicles were deployed in Italy, where the Germans were content to fight a defensive war. One by one the Elephants were lost in a series of holding actions, and by the winter of 1944 none were operational. The Elephant was superseded by the Jagdpanther, a true Jagdpanzer which combined acceptable mobility and good sloped armor while retaining the excellent gun and mostly solving the reliability, mobility and protection problems that the earlier vehicles had. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.